NHL players don't want to play in Canadian markets. But why? It's been 30 years since a Canadian team has won the Stanley Cup. And as fans, it can be perplexing to believe that a professional athlete doesn't want the glory that comes with ending a long and painful drought. But this past summer, we've seen some comments from NHL players discussing the pressures of playing in a Canadian market. Most recently, defenseman Rako Gudis stated in an interview that he received offers from Calgary, Edmonton, and Toronto, but he didn't want to play in Canada, especially in Toronto. He said that the media pressure in the playoffs was crazy and that he even felt it even though he played on Florida. This is after a former Conn Smythe winner in Ryan O'Reilly said something rather similar about his decision to leave Toronto in free agency. The underlying theme here is clearly pressure. In Canada, hockey is the country's main sport. Canadian markets live and breathe by their franchise. You're on top of the world when you're winning, but when you're losing, it can become a nightmare. The reality is that not every player wants that type of pressure on them 24-7. And when you boil it down to what happens on the ice, it really makes sense. Hockey is a game of constant mistakes. The team that wins is the team that minimizes their own mistakes while simultaneously forcing the opponent to make more. In a Canadian market, every single mistake is broken down and criticized by fans and the media. That is extremely frustrating as a player considering it is almost impossible to go an entire game without making one mistake or mental error. Now imagine if you're a less talented player or even a rookie starting out in the league your mistakes get picked apart even more and eventually you can become public enemy number one. There's been countless examples of this over the years and for that reason, most players simply don't want that for their game and their career. The culture in hockey is also inherently team first. It's why some people love the game, but it's also why others believe it hasn't been able to hit the stratospheric levels of popularity like the NFL and NBA. When you come to a Canadian market, you will either be praised as the hero or the scapegoat. In a league where it's widely accepted that the team is the primary focus, any individual attention can be very overwhelming. That overwhelming feeling can snowball onto the ice and slowly leaks into the player's decision making, resulting in poor play. If the player isn't used to it or doesn't welcome it, it becomes this vicious cycle. Hence why some players choose to opt out of playing in Canada entirely. Now, to be clear, there's nothing wrong with the decision of doing that. It's usually better for both parties long term if the player is aware that they can't deal with that added pressure before coming into the market. But it does give perspective of the types of players that want to come here and succeed in Canadian markets. In order to thrive in this type of environment, you need to be built differently not only as a player, but as a collective team. From the GM all the way to the coach and the players, it takes a special group to understand how to effectively deal with the pressure of playing in a Canadian market. Some groups have been more successful than others, but the crazy part is that no one has found that winning formula since 1993. And while media and fans will look at this whole situation and scoff at the idea that a pro athlete doesn't want the extra attention, it's tweets exactly like this that only confirm why some players simply don't want to play in Canada. You combine that with other things like lifestyle and income tax, Canada simply becomes a destination that many players end up crossing off their list. So what do you think about this whole situation? Do you see this becoming more and more of an issue for Canadian teams moving forward? There's a really, really interesting contract negotiation coming up in Canada very, very soon. So I can imagine the pressure and the media attention that will go down if things go south quickly in those negotiations. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And before we end the video, I want to thank our sponsor, Hockey Training. If you're a hockey player who wants to improve your game this summer, the Hockey Training app and YouTube channel is the best place to be. Armed with drills inspired by some of the greatest NHL players in the world, it is the number one spot to take your game to the next level, both on and off the ice. They got a whole bunch of great drill videos involving Bedard, McDavid, Matthews, McKinnon. So if you're interested, I'll leave the links in the bio down below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more NHL breakdowns, make sure you click that subscribe button and turn on notifications.